Welcome to Vegas Live with Ninon. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the show. Well, my guest is uh, Paul Papa, which is a great name, and I was thinking it could be Greek, but it's not. It's Italiano. And um, I'm Ninon, your host, Ninon de Verde Rosa, and we're on Vegas Live with Ninon, and we're at the Quirky Minds Media Studio. And um, what are we going to be talking about writing? And I noticed on the little thing I get that you're a ghostwriter. Yes. I mean, I don't know if anybody knows what a ghostwriter is. A ghostwriter is somebody that writes a book that was ne- that's never known, never seen, and has n- his name on nothing. No, that's exactly right. <laughs> you're a ghost. But they, but, they do, but they do all the work. Yes. So, and I've often thought to myself, well, how cool. It's very cool, but at the same time, I hate to say that I'm going to say it, though. You're really a nobody. Well, yeah, but that's actually kind of one of the nice things like about it? it. I do like it. I enjoy it very do you much. you like not being known? Yes. And you sit back and you listen to all the criticism. Yes. And then you sort of say, hmm, that's what I do. <laughs> and then if it's bad, I don't have to take it personally. <laughs> no, if it's bad, you just don't say anything. That's right. You, you just sit there and say, yes, I agree with you. Yes. <laughs> yes. What yeah. made you a ghostwriter? Um. I started out on accident. I uh, I found a, a book that this lady had written, um, and it was um, you could tell that there was a, a gem of something there. Yes. And um, I had been writing training manuals for years, so I'm used to writing things without my name on it. Okay. I got this book, and I went to her and said, "You know, I, I think I could make this book better for you." And um, she, you know, she was a little well, skeptical she... at first. Oh, because, really? Well, you know, the problem with being a ghostwriter is you can't tell people who you've written for. <laughs> So, so that's, oh, that's the right. one bad thing about it. So you you never have a resume. <laughs> no, it's always word of mouth. Somebody else has to say, "Hey, try this person and try that He's person." A, if you're looking for a ghostwriter, yeah. try this person. Yeah, and 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 they have to really know who they're doing it for because they don't want their name or anything involved with what they did. Absolutely, and you have to sign a cool. non-disclosure Talk about a catch agreement. twenty-one. Yeah, you you sign a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't I can't tell you any books I've written. I can't tell you any people I've written for. But you got two books that. right here. Well, but these are mine. See? <laughs> Hang on a second. These have my name on them. These, these are, this has your name yeah, on Yeah, these it. are ones that I wrote that I didn't go straight because I also write for You my also own write stuff. for yourself and yeah. everything else. And yes. what sort of books are these? So I write both uh, both fiction and nonfiction. And this, this book right here is a is a fiction series okay. set in 1950s Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And it's um it's about a, a guy who comes to Las Vegas for a bachelor party and doesn't leave. He has <laughs> That happens to a lot of people <laughs> there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he has ties to the mob in uh, in Boston, where he's from. His father is a fixer. Okay, um, a fixer is somebody if uh, if you kill somebody, or that you weren't supposed to, or you kill He'll somebody you were supposed to in the wrong place, then he fixes. He it. fixes it. And so, do you know any of these people? I, I can't say if I do or not. <laughs> <laughs> The ghostwriter so, has appeared. So, uh, there he is. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask him any question. I can't answer that one. <laughs> We're going to have a great conversation yeah, about it's nothing. Be short, though, right? <laughs> there's, there's no point you call a conversation about nothing. You're never going to get anywhere. You're not going to find out who he is. You're not going to. Have, I mean, you're not going to tell me anything. Oh, I'll tell you. Stuff. You, Don't you worry. have a website. I do have a website. Well, can we have it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to your mind. So this is a series. Yes, it's a, so which it's means a series. It's, it's a, uh, is it 13 episodes or, or how many books? Is it um, a, it's it's uh, currently two books. It's going into its, its third. will be released a little bit later this month. And this is year, there a film me. made off this or is, the game no, to, or it, is it a it series would, on Netflix? It, uh, it's not yet, but it would be nice if you know somebody. Let <laughs> I book. don't know anything either. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if it was a series on Netflix, but well, you know. That that might be cool. That would be very nice. Yeah. 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 And they're looking for stuff. They you are. know what most people don't understand? That every single network out there or every single channel or television, they are looking to fill their 24 hours every single day. So they're yeah. always looking for stuff. And people say, oh, they won't like mine, or, you know, I'm not good enough, or I'm not well known. That has nothing to do with it. They are always looking for stuff. So just get in touch with Netflix. You know, What can happen? They can say no. That's true. What already... gonna, I mean, if you didn't get in touch with them, it is no. But yeah. if you get in touch with them and they say no, then at least you know. Well, that's what I always think. You know, all I can do is tell you no. I already don't have a contract with well, them. Well, don't so have a contract. I don't hurt. know them. I don't know anything. So what difference does it make? Yeah, go, go for it. Yeah. You know, and there's another one. I think Lulu and there's Disney and Dulu, there's Lulu. Disney and yeah. there's all sorts of uh, Ruko. And there's mm-hmm. so many of them out yeah. there yeah. Um, that you can go. So I found, I sound like his manager. Okay. Well, I'm not. <laughs> 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 no, because I don't want no, 
I, I, I have homework. <laughs> I don't want with anybody. You can't mention that name or who they are or what they are. I think it's funny. What's the other book uh, behind This it? book, I also write uh, nonfiction, and I'm very fascinated with Las Vegas and, and older vintage Las Vegas. Oh, really? And so this book deals with all the places in Las Vegas that you can go to that are that are vintage, that have been here for a long time or have a vintage connection. So you've got to have the pepper mill in there, right? The pepper mill's in there. Yeah, of course. Um, the, the Golden Steer Steakhouse is in there. Golden Steer um, I didn't know that was old, is it? Yes, okay. 1954 it started. That's the before pepper mill was uh, 72. Yeah. So. And um, that's the steakhouses where uh, the Rat Pack used to go to. And they still have their, their bench where they used to set. Sit, excuse me. In fact, you can sit in that same bench if you go in there. Oh, I sat so, in the bench of the Rat Pack. Yeah. yeah. Rat Pack, well, what, four, they said there were five Rat Pack people. Well, because there was you know, Joey Bishop, Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra. Who was the fifth? Um, there was Peter Lawford. But he Peter Lawford, but he was never. He never was really on stage with them, but he was but considered the, part okay, of the so Rat that Pack. Was his, that was the five. Yeah. So that is kind and, of the, the. And that was their connection to Kennedy because he was Kennedy's that, um, brother-in-law. That's right. Yeah. He was married to one of the Kennedys. Yeah, That's so a story in itself. It is, yeah. So that was their connection to Kennedy, and yeah, yeah, the to... Kennedy in there. You know, yeah. they were quite yeah. a quite a family. Yeah. Well, they were the family with the liquor, and now who is the family with the marijuana? Because it's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. <laughs> Isn't that the same thing? Is you know, when yeah. the liquor came in, it was all undercover, and we yeah. couldn't have it in this state and that state, and the Kennedys got hold of it, and all. And now we've got this marijuana, which, uh, and it seems like they're getting more and more states involved. It does, yeah. We, yeah. we just came in, and who, who knows who's going to be next? You came, oh, you, or Boston? No, I mean, Nevada just came oh, in. Oh, no, Nevada so, came in, yeah. and yeah, they agreed with it yeah. all. That's yeah. right, yeah. And I think um, New Jersey, I'm not sure where, well, I don't know. Be. I don't, I don't, I don't really follow it, yeah. but I do know everybody said, oh, no, it's never going to be. I think it's a little late to get rid of it. I don't think, we, <laughs> I think, so. I think, I think it's too late. <laughs> that ship might have sailed already. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and that's out on this big ocean and it's landing in many ports. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what have you got coming up? Are you got, um, you know, I have, uh, I have the next book in the Rossi series. It's going to be coming up later this year. And I'm starting a new series of paranormal What's the name mystery. of the series? It's called Nightmare. Nightmare. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's a paranormal mystery. Okay. Um, it's I a like real to, nightmare. It really is a nightmare. I like to write, uh, my favorite thing to write is pulp fiction, noir. Okay. Old noir stuff. So and where do you is, get all that inspiration noir. from? Where do you, um, how do you... I watch a lot of old movies. <laughs> okay. Oh, and, what? wow. And um, I really enjoy old movies. And then uh, I was a fan of the uh, television series Supernatural that, that okay. just ended this year. Yes. And um, one day I was sitting around and I thought... I wonder what, what it would be like if Raymond Chandler wrote an episode of Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Then I thought, well, what if you wrote the whole series Supernatural? <laughs> and then I thought, well, what if I wrote a series? <laughs> and so that's how I got to uh, to Nightmare. So so in, in all your writing, as a ghost writer, also writing for yourself, what has really sort of inspired you or sort of, you know, you really thought, you know, I've made it, I've got there, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I love to do and everybody likes it. I, I think when I was able to quit my job, my full-time job, and just right. right, that's when I realized, okay, I can. I you can, can do now this. I do can this. I can make a living yeah. on this, and I've I've reached yeah. the epitome of where I need to reach to keep things going. Yeah. And since that has happened, has it been worthwhile? Oh yeah, very much so. I'm, yes, because you've know, got more time. I have more time. I'm doing what I like to do. I don't. Yeah. I'm one of those people who doesn't have a job. Um, probably. Well, he doesn't have a job, job because nobody knows. <laughs> well, no. Oh, we're back to the old thing again. Nobody knows. But I mean, it's, it, it's probably like you because you don't really work. You just do things you enjoy. Well, and so I go and do things I enjoy you know and I don't something? feel like it's work. But I've work. done that all my life. Oh. I, I have never worked in my... I think the hardest thing I ever worked on was my marriage. That's a job. <laughs> that can be a job. That yes. is a job because it's not always the way you want it. Yes. And that you're dealing with somebody else from a completely different family 24 hours a day yeah i was married for 29 years and my husband passed away mm. which is a tragedy for me because like we, we had a great relationship oh, we had a, yeah, and he was italian nice. oh was he yeah he I'll was italian see, you <laughs> you see, oh no we had yeah. a fabulous marriage oh, absolutely wonderful. yeah so you know i'm yeah. very contented with that part of that but you're right it's sort of it's uh, life is very different but life is really what you make of it yeah but life for you is making it without anybody knowing Yes. How do you cope with that? You know, it really doesn't bother me because... Um, it's a mystery. There's a lot of writers that get famous and then they can't go do things that they would normally do. Um, I'm not 
You're not that type. I'm not that type. I can still go do everything that I want to do. Um, and I still, I still make the money that I need to make to yes, survive. Yes, to survive, yes. But I don't, I don't have that name recognition outside. So you don't have to deal with the world. public out there. You don't have to say, yeah. oh, there's that person. I was yeah. in, a, in a store the other day and I had no makeup on. I had my cap on. And this guy's doing something. He suddenly turns around to me. He said, oh, Vegas, love with Nina. And I go, oh, no. <laughs> but at the one time, sometimes it's good because they recognize you. And obviously, yes. you appreciate it. But then when yes. you're not looking like you want to look, Absolutely. you, you want them not... to see you like this. You know, you want them all dressed up. Yeah. Okay. But that happens. So you don't have to worry about that. That's cool, isn't it? I don't. So at the moment, you've got this whole 24 hours a day, well, probably. And mm -hmm. do you have spasms of when you want to write and when you don't want to write? And when, or do you, do you put yourself into a place? Because being a ghostwriter, you have to finish this book because it's only books, right? You've yeah. Got, it's, ghostwriting is only for books or films, I guess it could like, be. It could be for films. Yes, yeah. it could be yeah. for films. Yeah. Now, do you just make a point of finishing that and doing that and very concentrated? Because working at home can be a little bit distraction. It can. Um, I, I treat it like a job. Um, I'm lucky that I had training that benefited me that I didn't even know benefited me. And that is I was an investigator for one of the strip hotels for a long time. Oh, really? And so I wrote a lot of security reports. And a security report has to be written when it comes in. Yes. You can't just wait till you're inspired. Two, two or three to days. It. Yes. Yeah. You can't do it. It has to be at the Absolutely. moment, on time at the moment. Yeah. And I didn't have a quiet place to write. I had an office that everything was going around me. And so... Oh. It taught me to write when noise is going on. It taught me to sit down at any time of the day and write. doesn't mean that everything I write is the greatest thing in the world, but, yeah, but you are I've a trained journalist, myself to sit But and you are. You sit and write. Yeah. You, you, you write what you see and how you see it. We all see yeah. everything different. So yeah. I could write the same story as you and be completely different. Absolutely. That's very true. Yeah. And then they look at you and say, well, how did you see it that way? Yeah. You know, which is always the criticism. Yes. Did you ever know Freddie Otash? No. Freddie O'Tash was one of the biggest private eyes in America. Oh, really? Yeah, from Los Angeles. Oh, oh nice. yeah, yeah. He was a Lebanese guy, great big, tall Lebanese guy. Yeah. And, but he was a private eye as well. He, but he d did a lot of the movie stars and those people. But he was in Los Angeles, not Vegas. Oh, okay. So you must have a lot of stories um, that you're going to put pen to paper on. Um, I do. Are you going to? You doing it now? Or are you? Uh, well, you know, I, even this in book? even in my fiction book, even in this book, I put a lot yes. of truth in there. So I put. Um, the people that are in there are real people, some yes. of them. Um, the situations are real. The places are real. Yeah. Things that have happened. Um, yes. Uh, a lot of that's real. And, you know, of course, I And that I, makes I it really, different yeah, things. Well, I'm sure yeah. you change names yeah. and different things like that. Like the, any book, you know, is, mm -hmm. is, that's definitely a ghost thing going on sure. <laughs> all the time because people don't want their name. But yeah. also you could get sued, so you have to be very careful. You have to be careful. Yeah, so when you yeah. tell a story, it has to be the right story. So since you have all the documentation of all these different stories, you're not going to go wrong because it was put out there. Absolutely. If nobody yeah. criticized it then. Why would they criticize it now? Yeah. So you've got proof. So, yes, I do. So, so what is your next big thing apart from doing all this? What's your big thing? I'm not going to ask him who he's ghostwriting well, for because he's not going to tell me. Apparently, <laughs> my next big thing is Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to go get it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's in, isn't that in life, though? Yes. Whatever you want out there, you, you personally, you can't rely on anybody else. And no. I know that for a fact. Yeah. You have to do it yourself. Otherwise, it's not going to get done. It's not going to happen. But then it won't happen the way you want it either. Yeah. So you have to go out there. So how? So you get word of mouth for your ghost, ghost writing, right? Mm -hmm. do you, do you... Yeah. If somebody somebody used me and they liked me and then they hear somebody else. Any great stories you've written and, that you've really um, thought, wow, is this, is this really true? And did this really happen? And I've had a couple where yeah, I've had to you know, like, wonder if this was real or not. Or like, <laughs> Take a big breath. Um, and, did this really happen? <laughs> and, you know, the hardest thing about ghostwriting is to write it in that person's voice because you don't want to write it in your voice. No, you, you have nothing. Well, you, he really has nothing yeah. to do with it. Yeah, you really don't want to. You have can't your voice change any of the all. words. You can't do no. anything at all. No. Do they give you a script complete and then you then then you have to put it together or sometimes sometimes i have a script sometimes i just sit and talk with them you just sit and talk and you you make a recording of everything mm -hmm. they say yeah and they, that's if they let me if not and they take a lot of notes you, <laughs> can you imagine taking you know you got this book i mean how many pages two three hundred pages at least you yeah. know oh, so yeah. you got take notes of a 300 page book yeah wow it's not easy to do but no know. it's not easy to um, do so anybody out there that wants a book written and they want a ghost writer um how can they reach you you can find me on my website which is paulwpapa.com okay um you can
can find me on Facebook under the same I name. I like that, papa.com. How cool is that? <laughs> papa.com. What a cool name. Thank you. It should be pp.com. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I love it. So they can find you on Facebook and on any of the social Any of the social platforms there. all under Paul and W. Papa. Any particular books you like to go strike on? Is it anything? Um, I really enjoy uh, more memoirs. I like I like to hear people's stories. Yes. I'm very interested in So you in like biographies and, and everything yeah. like that. So their yeah. life and everything. Especially if you're older out there. And I know that in Vegas, there are a lot of older people out here that are celebrities that really live that life yes. out here. There's, there's one person, actually, I'm trying to get him on my show. Uh, his first name is Martin, but I, I, he hasn't called me yet, but i I got to call him. Yes. And um, he's got a, a story to tell. I'm sure that he would love to have it written all down. Because, well, I, I would love to do it, I, especially people who, who have been around the block several times. This guy's been around the block. Yeah. He, Those are the he, stories he, yeah, to tell. A lot of, Those are the interesting yeah, things. Yeah. There's yeah. another guy, I think, Fred Domaney. Here in the Tropicana, mm. and he's still in the family here, and he's still out. I'm, I'm quite sure he's got a good story to yeah. tell yeah, uh, that he would like. You know, so these are all these people. So, how do you get? Do you know how to get to these people? Or? Um, usually, they come to me. They have to come. To you. <laughs> there are some Isn't times. That cool? Yeah, there's sometimes I'll go to somebody and and I'll I'll try to tell them, but then again, it's they don't know who I am. Um, well, of course not. And so, so that's um, why we've got him I on can't the give show. Them any references? Well, now you so. can. <laughs> Now you can, uh, you're going to be out there. You're going to be on. Absolutely. You're going to be on all the social media yeah. platforms and everything else. So now you're going to know, and you can get in touch. Did you give your phone number? I didn't. I can give Do you want it? Phone. Do you want sure. it? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It's seven zero two eight five eight three seven two zero. So give him a call, and then it'll be completely quiet. Nobody will know who anybody is, and uh, the greatest ghostwriter actually yes. in Las Vegas. Ah, thank you. Absolutely amazing. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you, Paul, for coming thank on. Thank you for having we'll me. We'll be right back with our next guest. Take care. If you enjoy the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Nino on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nino.